Welcome to Section 3, The Interview. This section will cover all the components of creating a user-friendly interview within A to J Author. In the initial videos, we'll cover the drafting stages. This is the very important prep that happens before you actually start building in the software. Then I'll discuss the mechanics of the question design editor and how to use all of its components. The bonus features video will cover all of the little extras that can jazz up your interview for end users and make the process of authoring easier for you. Finally, I'll teach you how to make the leap from a simple interview to one that contains advanced conditional logic statements, transforming your interview into an expert system for self-represented litigants. The first part in section three covers the use of the storyboard. I'm using the phrase storyboard loosely here because the main focus of this video is the initial drafting stage. This is figuring out exactly what information you need to ask the user for, what information you need to give the user, and the order in which you're going to ask those questions and provide that information. Next, I'll talk about two different ways that I recommend organizing your interview language and question flows before you dive into the software. But for simplicity's sake, I'm going to refer to both of these as storyboards. The storyboard is an important part of the process of creating a pro se friendly A to J guided interview. The storyboard helps you to prepare for authoring the interview in A to J author by organizing your questions, steps, and the variables you'll need to associate with each question. It also helps you to review your interview questions for plain language before moving into the authoring process. We'll talk more about plain language in the next part of this section. Storyboards can be done in a variety of ways and you have to find the one that works best for you and your development process. I'll cover two here, the flow chart format and the outline format. Whatever method you prefer, here are the steps that you'll employ to create that storyboard. First, you pull out that highlighted form that you marked up during section one of this series and note all the variables that you'll need to cover. Then make a list of all the questions that you'll need to ask to cover those variables. I have some tips for using AI for that in a later video in this section. Third, you look at those questions. Do any areas overlap? If so, group those questions. For example, if the form asks for the user's children's names on page one, but their school information on page four, you can group that similar information into one step in your interview. Ask all the children questions at once instead of making your user change mental lanes multiple times like the form wants. Your questions can be grouped any way that makes sense and it's not dictated by the physical form. Then you take those group of like questions and form your steps with them. These are the big picture context markers of your interview. Combine all the variables with the text of the questions like what is your name? and put client name first TE, client name middle TE, and client name last TE with that question. Tagging on to that example, you'll want to think through any logic statements you might want to add as well. So in the name example I just gave, I would probably have a variable called client name full TE that was based off logic that tested if the user has a middle name and then combined first plus middle plus last or if no middle name, just first and last. We'll cover drafting logic statements in depth in video seven of this section. Also think about what additional information you'll want to give your end user in the form of pop-up definitions and learn mores. Where are you using legalese that might need to be defined? Or where are you asking questions that might need additional contextual help to solicit the best answer possible? Mark those questions and draft the learn mores and pop-ups in your storyboard. Finally, figure out the best workflow for all this information. What steps and questions make sense being asked first? What order should all of this go in? Map it out on your storyboard. If you're a visual person, I recommend the flow chart slash process map style of drafting. Each bubble represents a question with the associated variables and button options inside of it. Each step is a different color. I have arrows showing how the pages are connected to each other. The green callouts are learn more prompts that I'll include. The tan callouts are logic statements associated with that page. I also use the circle arrow icon to indicate a repeat loop page. This is very similar to the map tab in A to J author. So the jump to authoring there from this storyboard would be very easy. This flowchart process map was made in Google Draw, but there are other process map building tools out there that are more extensive. The other type of storyboard I recommend is an outline format. 
This is how I prepared for all of my law school exams, so this has a nostalgic lawyerly feel to me. The outline has the steps broken down by numbers with a step title, then each page underneath the step title, underneath each page slash question, is the variables associated with them, then logic, branching, or learn more additions as further indented notations. This style will transition more easily to the Pages tab view when authoring because that tab has a similar outline format. Either way you choose to create your storyboard, there are some things you'll need to think about in terms of the overall design of your interview. In section one, part six, we talked about scoping a project and highlighting all the blanks on your form. Those blanks become the variables that you'll use in your template and in your interview. They also form the basis for building out your question design document, be it a storyboard or an outline. As you start to think about your interview, you want to focus on the overall design of the questions. The great thing about automated forms is that you, the author, dictate the flow of the information, and you can structure it in a way that best suits the needs of your target audience, rather than be governed by the confines of the paper form. To that end, when you're planning out your interview, make sure to keep your audience and goal in mind. Also, in that scoping section of part one, there were five steps to create an automated document project that was just right, not too big and not too small. Step two was to define exactly who your project is going to help. I recommend creating one to five user personas to represent the people that are going to be your end users. In that video, I said that throughout the entire authoring process, you want to keep these user personas in mind. What information will they need? What access to data or internet connections will they likely have? How much time will they have to complete the forms? Will they need the ability to save and come back? Will they have access to the paperwork needed to complete the forms? Do you need to define a legal term or explain a legal concept to them? Here's where that comes up again. As you're drafting your storyboard, keep those users in mind and what goal you are helping them to accomplish. Make sure to include instructions and tell them what they'll need to have on hand at the start of the interview. For example, to complete this interview, you will need your and your spouse's prior year's taxes, the addresses of your children's schools, and any documentation showing monthly expenses. Think about what your typical user would have on hand, likely something like their driver's license, and what they might need to look for ahead of time, like a copy of their spouse's W-2. We've already talked about grouping like questions with like because those groups form the basis of your step system within your interview. When you transition your end user from one step to the next, make sure to give them context. Just like a well-written essay will transition between paragraphs, so too should your steps. It can be very simple, like, I finished asking you questions about your spouse. Now I'm going to ask you questions about your children. The bullet points on the right-hand side here come from an experienced author when I first started with A to J Author. When you are interview drafting, you want to build user confidence in the interview process. This is likely a new technology that your end user is using, and they may not be comfortable with it, compounded with the fact that they are likely dealing with a personal legal issue. So begin with easy and quote-unquote safe questions. Explain the process to them, provide those instructions, give them some legal information before diving into the questions like, so why do you want a divorce? Or what's your monthly income type questions. Finally, when you're in the interview itself, think about what words you could embolden to emphasize, how you could use different question types, think text fields, drop down lists, buttons, to elicit the same answer, and where you could add images and videos to learn more than pop-ups, to really up that multimedia factor that goes with the idea that a picture is worth a thousand words. Here are some tips for when you're thinking about the order in which you place your questions. At the beginning of the interview, you should have a checklist of everything the user will need to complete the interview and instructions on how to use it. If there are any eligibility or qualifications, you should get those out of the way quickly. You don't want someone to spend 30 minutes answering personal questions and providing details just to find out that they're in the wrong county or don't meet your organization's eligibility guidelines. If you're going to kick someone out of the process, do it early on. Finally, for the beginning of the interview, provide a hook. Give the user a reason why they should continue with this automated process. It can be something like, we're going to walk through a series of pages where I ask you questions and then provide you information about your legal situation. 
At the end of about 30 minutes, you should have all the paperwork you need to complete X legal process. The second set of tips is for dealing with sensitive questions. Many legal situations require intimate details about a person's life or family to be recorded in the court paperwork. There are ways to ask sensitive questions that don't raise someone's heckles or put them on edge. So you can start with more neutral questions, then build to the more personal ones. Like the hook, this builds trust in the process and the software. You can also embed questions in a safe context, like, sometimes people get behind on their bills. Please explain why you haven't paid your rent for X months. The last tip also comes from one of our longtime automating partners. The court forms in their state required the user to put their social security number on them. The organization also knew that many of the potential users of these automated forms would be accessing them on public kiosks or library computers. There was a high risk of that user's social security number being seen by others if the user didn't properly clear and close their internet browser session. So the organization decided to not ask for that number in the interview. Instead, they gave the user instructions to handwrite that number before they filed their court paperwork. They were advocating for their users by not automating something. Let's finish off the storyboard section by talking about the individual questions. This will be covered more in depth in the next video on plain language, but when drafting language for your pro se friendly interviews, you should always shoot for a fifth grade reading level. This plain language approach ensures that your content will be understood by the majority of adults. When you're building out your questions, be careful about assuming what end users will know. What may seem common knowledge to you as an educated legal professional in a calm setting may not be so for someone in a stressful legal situation. So allow for an other or an I don't know option in your field choices. Questions shouldn't rely on prior questions to be answered. If you ask the user about something in a previous question and need to do a follow-up on that information, remind them of what they already told you about. There is a technique in A to J author called using a macro that allows you to call up the value of a variable and display it back to the end user. You'll learn more about that in a later video in this section, but just note that it's a thing that can be used to remind the end user of past answers. A common use of a macro would be a question like, do you have any more monthly expenses to tell me about? They've gone through a repeat loop and told you about each bill that they pay monthly. On that, do you have any more question? You can have a learn more that uses a macro to say, you've already told me about your car payment, rent, and insurance payment to remind them of the three expenses they've already given you. Even with allowing for an other option or an I don't know, you should ensure that the questions aren't ambiguous. Be clear about what you are asking. If you need additional examples or explanations for the end user, add them in learn mores or pop-ups to ensure you're clearly explaining what you are asking for. Finally, the whole point of document assembly is to make form filling easier than the paper copy. So make it convenient for the end user. Use the tools built into the software, like macros, learn mores, functions, and pop-ups to facilitate users' answers. You can also use the power of the internet and link out to websites to help them look up information, like a zip code or a county based on an address. Remember, you can rearrange questions, structure the flow of the interview to best fit end users, and add as much additional content as you want to make the experience of completing court forms better for your user. We've reached the end of part one of section three of the interview. You've learned about the two types of storyboards that can be used in your drafting process and have tips for creating the script to be used in your interview development. The next video will cover plain language, why it's important when automating forms for self-represented litigants, and the tools you can use to improve your content.